Yes, sir. You're going to do the sharing, yes. right? Yes, sir. We're going to share. Why don't you introduce uh, Mark to everybody, dude? All right. Here we Let's go. Share. We are live. Right. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Monday, Monday night of Get Some Fire Live with the one and only fitness ninja on tonight, Mark Zalinoff, a.k.a. Uh, the Burpee King. Um, a burpee killer, maybe we should call him. Maybe the burpee killer. Um, I think so. I think that's fair, man. That's fair. Yeah, that's a fair analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when when life knocks you down, do a burpee. Yeah, yeah. That's oh it. man. I thought we were supposed to ride a door when life knocks you down, but. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Make Good Choices. So uh, Mark is a best-selling author of Make Good Choices. You can get it on Amazon. Check it out. Great book. And uh, Mark is a fitness coach and a member of the Goon Squad. We're uh, headlining the event coming up uh, this Thursday. Hopefully, we won't get ice stormed out. Uh, you guys are supposed to have nice weather down there in Texas, and, and you got New York weather down. There. It's actually be warmer <laughs> here in New York than it is in Texas when I go. I don't know what that's about, but it's ridiculous. I didn't bring it because it's there before I get there. You know, I know Thomas brought it down when he went, but you know, this one, this one's there before I got there. So you can't blame me. But um, so, what's going on, Mark? You ready for the uh, event? Dude, I'm excited. You know, after after spending the weekend in Cabo with all those dudes and, you know, we just had a chance to really, I don't even want to say get to know each other better. Like we know each other really, really well. We talk all the time, but to have that time away where none of us were really focused on work, nobody had anything to do except just enjoy each other and relax and connect. And it was just amazing. And, you know, we came out of that just, just fired up and, you know, looking at what we've accomplished over the last couple of years collectively individually within apex watching apex grow and just really kind of soaking it all in of like man we've really come really far in a very short amount of time that's amazing for us watching from the outside i mean all of you guys i mean just since i've known you get eight months i think we've we met and uh i mean it's just watching you guys go is it's awesome it motivates yeah. all of us, man. It's really, uh, really great to see. And, you know, well, and, and I think too, I, I, so I've talked about this a little bit before. If you know, Ryan Stuman, you know, he's on this, this path where he is just exponentially Sailing. growing right yeah. now. And what I think happens is he's growing at a rate where there's a segment of people that can't relate to him anymore. Mm. And it's not, it has nothing to do with him. It's not his fault. It's just next it's just, level. Yeah. You know, he's just on a next level where a lot of people look and go, oh, man, must be nice. Mm -hmm. And not in a bad way, but they're like, man, you know, that's wow. Like, I can't even fathom that. And I think those of us who are still in this and still working on this, you know, becoming the CEO and growing what we're growing, we're still relatable. Yes. You know, we're, we're still I like, think that's important because you're right. It's we're like, not at that stuman level, you know, like and, and there's nothing wrong with that either. But but we're at a level that's still attainable to mm -hmm. most people. Most people can still wrap their head around and go, okay, these guys have been busting their ass to get where they are. Yep. And we yep. can do that too. Cause there's, I mean, you know, we're all special, but none of us are special. You know what I mean? Short, like, bus, <laughs> short bus special. Yeah. <laughs> wear, wear a helmet special. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I think it's important to, to have that relatability where people can look at you and go, okay, I can, I can do that. And I think that's what we're really excited about bringing to the stage is like, look, you know, we're, we're nothing special. We don't have any, you know, hidden talents. We don't know anything that anybody else doesn't know, but we have a track record of success mm -hmm. now and we can speak to how we got here. And, and I think, again, that's what we're really excited to, to just pour into people from the stage and, and find that next crew of people to to rise up and be the next leaders. Yeah, I guess the imposter syndrome, I think, kind of gets greater and greater as people get bigger. Like when you see Ryan, you know, you're like, you know, I know him pretty good personally now. But, you know, when you first see him, you're like, wow, it's Ryan, his jets and his cars. And it's like, I'll never be that successful. And then, you know, and then you got the next level of guys like regular guys like, you know, you guys are now coming up and it's like was that closer closeness of it you know when we first got in you know i met sam who was in probably about a year before me and i thought he was like this big shot and then i realized you know who he really was now <laughs> well, thanks, thanks. Yeah. i'll just uh, yeah appreciate that brian you got, yeah, i got three under the bus once in a while but uh <laughs> no uh but you know me and sam have connected like you guys in the goon squad have connected and a couple other guys have uh, starting to connect with us and it's you know you kind of just gravitate towards each other of you know every time we get together and like you said with that trip together 
just every time we go to an Apex event and we go out for dinner, we go out and smoke cigars and hang out and just talk about life and business and, you know, the good and the bad, the ugly, whatever. Um, and uh, you build that bond and you learn a little bit more about each other and you, and that imposter syndrome kind of goes away because you realize that we're all at the same boat. We all had the same struggles. We're all, you know, we're going there and then you got p people encouraging you saying, hey, listen, I can do it. You can do it. Let's do it together type thing, which is really a nice, one of the nicest things I think about Apex is everybody's helping everybody do it together. There's no one's looking down on anybody. Even the biggest, you know, people in there are, will take the smallest person in and say, hey, grab a drink with me. Let's talk. You know, there's no... That, you know, a lot of times you get in these circles where there's an elitist kind of thing, and it, we don't have that there, which is really cool. And you guys are, you know, big leaders in that. I mean, you got open arms to everybody in Apex, and it's just really cool. Well, look, I you got know, a question. With, I got a question for Mark, but make your point, Mark, and then I'll circle back. It's okay. Yeah, you know, within within the network, like we're nothing without each other. Exactly. I mean, exactly. you know, we could all go run a business and do the things and whatever, but you know, we're all searching for something else. We all want to belong to something greater than ourselves. And we know the power of the collective. And, and so that's why there's no ego, I mean, you know, some people got an ego, whatever, yeah, but yeah, you know, there's really, man. there's no ego driven agendas in the group. There's nobody that's, that's just like totally self-serving because those people work themselves out. Yep. They don't last because yep. we all see through them and they just, they don't fit the culture. Yeah. So the mindset, you know, that, I think, is big and something we wanted to talk to you about um, mental health versus physical health and how they go hand in hand. And your thoughts on that as far as I mean, I think a lot of a lot of the apex culture helps our mental health more. You know, it's it's more than just a business group. It's all of us getting our heads straight and getting the nonsense out and our pasta syndromes out and our limiting beliefs out and all this new rewiring that's going on in all of our heads um you know and that's that's our mental health you know the, the struggles the anxiety that we have and whatnot um and you as a fitness coach um you speak on that i know uh i know you're a big mental health you know guy also as part of your your programming and um and just talk about that a little bit with us if you could well you know here's the thing i mean there's only two things that we can ever control and it's our thoughts and our actions. Mm -hmm. And we have no control over anything else. I can't control what you guys do. I can't control the weather. I can't control the president. I can't control traffic. Like there's so much that we try to force our way into mm -hmm. where those are the only two things we got. Mm -hmm. What's going on here and then what we do with that information, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I think when you accept that, it's a very freeing feeling. I know for me, it has been, you know, it's something that, I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago, I kind of like came to that realization through stoicism and through some other things of, oh, that's, that's really all I can, all I can do is that. And, but, it, but it releases all that other stuff. So you just don't worry about it. Mm. And, and I think when you understand that, you know, no matter what happens around me, I get to control how I respond to that. It takes that stress away. At least for me, it does. I'm like, oh, okay, well, now what do I do with this? And that goes for anything from, you know, the smallest thing to the biggest thing. Like, what if somebody came in and murdered my family? You know, like that could happen, you know, it, ho hopefully it won't happen, mm -hmm. but it could. But then it's up to me. Like I get to choose how to respond to that. And I, and, you know, we're human. So I think a lot of times our initial response or our initial um, urge is to be emotional and to react, you know, in, in a, in a non-rational manner, but you know, the old, like take 10, you know, count to 10, take a deep breath and then think about what's going to happen next. Yeah. Like, I think that, I think there's a lot of validity in there. There is, there is. And I think a lot of people yeah, no wouldn't no say what there, there would be a lot less stupid things said out loud. <laughs> people would just do that and go. Yeah. I call that the breathe and roll method. Take a deep breath and let it roll off. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, but but it does it rises and falls with what's going on in between in your ears i had a lady this morning in the gym she's had this mental block of of the weight like the the actual weight that she lifts and she's been stuck at a certain weight with her deadlift for a while and and she came to me this morning she's like should i change my numbers we keep track of of our big lifts in the gym i go well have you changed your head yet mm -hmm. and so she she kind of looked at me and she goes well kind of and I said, all right, explain. And she told me she's been reading Relentless by Tim Grover. And he talked about limitations and how they're not real. And he said, you know, try to put your hand on your limitations. You can't, there's, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's all in here. Mm -hmm. 
And she goes, I really resonated with that. I said, all right, well, here's what you're going to do today. She said, okay. And she went and crushed it. You know, so, so just being aware that she had some mental blocks going on, pursuing something, anything to try to help her and then being coachable, you know, and I guarantee you over the next couple of months, she's going to, she's going to blow right fucking past whatever, whatever that number was that she keeps getting stuck. Cause it's all mental. Like, I, you know, we see her work out other people that are in the gym at the same time. They're like, Oh, you're totally strong enough to pick that up. She just can't get out of her own head to do it. Have you ever now tried... I, I know that it's going to happen. In the gym, have you tried like you know playing with people? Like, all right, they normally have three hundred, but put three and a quarter or whatever on the bar and tell them it's three hundred and see if they can lift it. Type thing, you know? What I mean, I bet you that that mindset thing. They think they lift the three hundred, but they really lift so, more. So sometimes, so for my personal training clients, a lot of times I just tell them what to put on the bar, but I don't tell them a weight. So they may be paying attention. They may not. Yeah. yeah. So I'll be like, okay, add 25s, add more 25s, add 15s. And so they're just stacking weight on and doing the reps that I tell them. And my, one of my guys, Dale, who's been with me almost 14 years now, when we're done with the last. Oh, what was in your audio? Last set, he goes, okay, how much was that? 400 or whatever him it's just but not no that's part of what he enjoys uh of training with me is i'm willing to do that for him and just tell him hey you know here's what you're putting on the bar yeah. go do it and then he does it yeah we did that in real estate uh, world sam people. what was your question before oh, yeah, I, know, yeah. I, I know that was like uh, 15 minutes ago <laughs> yeah, we ran him over well I, I i forgot it no i i didn't so you had said you'd seen a uh, a vast change over the last two to three years I wanted to visit the catalyst for that change and kind of what really kicked that off because there was a time like uh, like all of us you were starting out as a business owner and you were just wondering about rent and wondering about payroll and now you were a long way from that so just maybe walk me through that catalyst that hit a couple of years ago and helped you to hit the trajectory you're on now yeah so so i've been a business owner for 16 years now. I mean, I, I went out on my own. I, w I worked at a big box gym for three years and then I went out, out on my own. That was 2007. Something so changed. Been... Something changed three years ago. In 2000. Oh, yeah, in, yeah. In, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> some, I'll, some, I'll private, tell you some, private, some private jets. Some, you know. <laughs> uh, um, and, and so for a long time, you know, I, I struggled and I just kind of, I made an okay living, but never were great and sometimes it was like you know i was a few clients away from oh shit i'm gonna have to go get a job and then i'd be a few clients away from having that breakthrough and then a few clients away from oh shit again you know so just riding that roller coaster and probably maybe 2015 2016 i hired a business coach it was the first time I was, because what was happening is i was surrounded by average people mm -hmm. and you know, every other fitness coach around me was in the same boat as me. So I didn't have anybody to look to. I didn't have anybody to go, oh, well, they're doing way better than I'm doing. What can I learn from them? So I had to kind of get in the room with people that were doing better than me and, and start learning. And, and through that process, you know, along the way, I met, I met Stuman. And, you know, when the time was right, which was uh, spring of 2019 is when I joined Apex. And I, I kind of, I don't want to say I was I was done with that other coaching group that I was in, but it was all fitness people. And I was at a stage where I knew I needed more than just that arena. Like I wanted the right, business yeah. arena. And I was I was watching Stuman go through a transformation himself. I was watching the people around him start to change. And, uh, you know, again, something just told me I needed to be aligned with that. So I joined Apex. I start doing the build your machine. I start pouring into the process and just trusting it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, okay, I paid the money. Here's the <laughs> thing they say to do. We'll go yeah. do it and see what happens because that's what I do every day for other people. Right. They come mm -hmm. in the gym. I go trust the process. Here's what yep. we're doing and come back tomorrow. Yep. We're going to do it again. And so I just really had to take my own advice, which you guys know is always the hardest thing to do in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, totally. You know, <laughs> it's easy to give other people advice all day long, yeah. but to do it yourself, fucking sucks mm -hmm. um so i you know i started pouring into i started pouring into build your machine i started pouring into the network just being of service and all of a sudden you know people started reaching out to me for help 
And whether it was in the gym or online, you know, I do online coaching as well. It, it started to escalate. I'm like, oh, I see all that work I've been doing for the last mm -hmm. six to nine months is yeah. now paying off. And, you know, so often we stop after two weeks or somebody makes three posts and nobody responds and they go, well, this shit doesn't work. I'm never <laughs> posting again. Really? Like, yeah, <laughs> it makes no I mean, sense, yeah, right? But, but sometimes, sometimes it does feel like you're just shouting into a canyon for those six months, wondering if anything, anybody on the other side of it can hear you, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, what, you know, that's why we preach consistency. And so, mm -hmm. you know, along the way, I, I had built a relationship, obviously, with Ryan. I built a relationship with Thomas. Um, you know, I met Drewby, started building a relationship with him and, and the rest of the goon squad. And then, you know, the, the scamdemic hit. <laughs> and, you know, here I am with the brick and mortar gym, but I, I was already training online. So, I knew what to do, and there was a, a whole group of people out there who had no clue. Mm. So a couple of things I ended up doing was I put together an at-home workout program through my app that quite a few people took advantage of. I know Brian McKittrick is one of those people who's also in the Goon Squad, and he mm. ended up losing 40 pounds in 2020 just working out at home, mm. you know, because he chose to take action. And then my buddy Jonathan Loudermilk and I, we combined forces and formed a company to go out and help other fitness professionals. So out of COVID was born another company where we could go serve our expertise to the world and help, you know, help good coaches stay in business. And it's just, I mean, really, it's just been escalating ever since then. And, you know, continuing to put myself in the room with Thomas and Chris and Mike and Drew B and Ryan and Brian and, and, you know, and you guys and, really just everyone that, you know, I'm fortunate I live in the Dallas area. So there's tons mm -hmm. of apex people around here, but just choosing to continue to be a servant in that role. And then, you know, I got the opportunity to be a coach for apex, which has been incredible. And, you know, I just, I, as much as I can, I just try to lead with a servant heart of like, who can I go help today? You know, my, my mission in life is to leave people better mm -hmm. period in whatever manner that that is. I don't care because I know if I do that every day and I do enough of that, I'll have any and everything that I could possibly want in this world. Put your head in a pillow every night knowing you made the world a better place. That's my saying. <laughs> and fire starts fire, you know? Yeah. Um, I imagine the fitness world is much like uh, the contractor world. So uh, in our contractor world, the best uh, electrician, the best plumber, you know, the, the top mechanic or whatever decides, I can do this myself. I don't need the boss anymore. And they go start their own company. They know nothing about running a business. And they could be the best gym rat there is. But when it comes time to run a business, they know nothing about it. And I'm sure that's the void, obviously, you guys are, are filling with your, uh, with your company there. And it's a, it's a void that um, Sam and I also work with people on. It's, you know, just because you're the best person of your industry of your trade doesn't mean you can go open that business and run that business um you know and then they get discouraged and they hate life and they're working 100 hours a week and they're not making any money and they're not charging it enough and they're not paying the taxes and you know they're trying to be the accountant the bookkeeper the receptionist you know they're not delegating anything and uh it's a typical scenario we see over and over we've actually uh personally um through the family we bought a bunch of hvac businesses that were like that that they were just you know these guys were good at what they did they maybe they were good in sales but knew nothing about running a business and they were overwhelmed and they were upside down and they had a big client base and but you know because they were not following the steps in the process and having everything set up you know they weren't making money they were hating life and they just wanted out you know and um i imagine your gym business is similar it's pretty much every industry right just because you're good at it doesn't mean you can own the best business at it well, I think what we find a lot with, with other fitness professionals is they suck at sales. Mm -hmm. And, and again, it's, it's a huge, just mental, mental block, mental limitation of, you know, I don't want to be pushy and I don't want to this and I don't want to that. And I'm like, look, if people don't know you exist and don't know you're good at what you do, you don't have a business anymore. Mm -hmm. Like you have to tell people. Yes. You solve, you serve, you, you know, and, and, there and, you go. You got to solve yeah, the problems, and, and then so, you got to you sell know, them, and then help. you sell them. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't be salesy. When I we I, I speak to trainers. Understand? Go for it, mate. Sorry, we're we're, we're overlapping each other on the. Yeah, we got a little delay no, going. Go ahead, yeah. Mark. Yeah, there's a little <laughs> delay going. On. Go ahead, man. I was going to say, you know, when we 
when we talk to these coaches and get them to understand, number one, you can't give enough away. Like any, anything that anybody wants in this world, you can find the information for free somewhere. Yep. Like mm -hmm. there's no, there's no secrets anymore. Right. Yeah. You can Google. go find go, go to YouTube, go yeah. get a, go get a magazine. Like you can, you can find any and any information you want. Right. So there's nothing that I can put out on the internet that I'm like, Oh, what if I give away all my secrets, nobody's going to want to pay me money. No, like you got to yeah. give until people go, well, shit, if, if he's, if he's given that, well, what happens when I pay? <laughs> amazing things right yeah. attractive and marketing so, right yeah so getting these coaches to, just to understand that look you just go out and serve and help people and you don't have to be oh, we're getting stuck losing your audio be salesy you know it doesn't have to be alley total fitness terrible uh, but <laughs> but you know just just getting them to understand what sales actually is is huge yeah i find out um i just did a little audit with my uh, real estate team and i went on their facebook page and then on their facebook page it didn't even say that they sell real estate and i'm like um guys I'm like <laughs> i'm like your, your your bio's not filled out you know any of the profile <laughs> stuff i'm like it's real simple just put your website in there what you do and and it's funny i did it and they're like oh a couple people called me this week about real estate stuff and i'm like you see how simple it is <laughs> you see it's not that hard <laughs> But it's just, it's really just bringing people to that, you know, opening their eyes to the obvious, you know, a lot of it's right in front of you and they don't see it, you know, and that's, that's where the coaching, I guess, comes in and, you know, the, the experiences I've found luck with, I'm going to share with the next person and we're going to share it to the next person and that's how we all grow together, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool. So, uh, tell us about your book. What's the uh, purpose behind your book? Well... Purposes Other to help than make good make choices. Good choices. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty obvious, right there. But um, what what brought you to, to write the book? What 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 hit you with that? Other than uh, I just want to be an apex top selling author. <laughs> well, you know, obviously that's part of the part of the builder machine is writing the book, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when I sat down to figure out what I was going to write about, I I didn't want to write a health and fitness book. Like, there's a thousand of those. Nobody reads them. Nobody wants to, nobody even wants to read those things. You know, nobody follows those plans. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm like, okay, well, you know, I've been writing a lot on social media for quite a while and I had everything saved, you know, I've been, at least I've been, I've made good choices and use Evernote. <laughs> so all my, all my posts are in there and I've been heavily influenced by the daily stoic. So if you don't know what the daily stoic is, it's a daily read it takes like a minute if you're, if you're really special, it maybe takes two minutes, mm -hmm. but you know, I've been heavily influenced by that. And I like, I like the content in small chunks sometimes, because I think when, you know, how many times have you guys read a book and you just plow through it and then you're like, what did I read? Oh, yeah. Shit. Yep. Yep. You know, like I've done it a thousand times. Yep. Right. Totally guilty so, of that. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> so what I wanted to do was create something where people can take their time and actually absorb and implement the information. So it's 52 entries meant to be read one a week. And there's a journal prompt that comes along with it. And it's all quotes from, you know, historical people, stoicism, probably the Bible movies, things I've made up, like, you know, anything that's really just resonated with me over time and then my take on it and how I've been able to coach other people or help other people or how that mantra has helped improve my own personal mindset. And again, for the people that will actually read it the way it's intended, I've had a lot of people go, sorry, man, I just kind of read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, well, go back and read it a week at a time now. But it really allows you to think about, okay, what does this mean to me? Like, how can I, how can I use this to make good choices and, and make my life better? I'll give you guys an example. So week two in the book is titled 4160. And mm -hmm. what 4160 is, is the number of weeks you have to live if you live to be 80, which is life expectancy in the U.S. So you start thinking about, you only got like 4,000 weeks to live. And most of the people that are picking up this book are probably 30 to 40 years old. So now you got about 2,000 weeks to live. Mm -hmm. You start breaking things down like that. And it gives you some perspective. Are you really going to bitch and moan about Mondays? You only got 1,900 Mondays left in your life? Yeah. yeah. You know, you start breaking that number down and it gives you some perspective. So even just something that, that could seemingly be innocuous like that could really have a deep impact on somebody to be like, oh, shit, like maybe I should make these things count a little more. Maybe I should have a little 
you know, a, a, a better positive outlook and not that everything's all fucking rosy and sunshine and rainbows all the time. But again, back to the beginning of this, like we get to choose how we respond to life. And so having, having a different perspective, seeing things from a different lens, I think really, really can help people make good choices and, and live with more joy on a regular basis. Yeah, the, the, the make good choices. You're, you're in my head every day. Just, just to, to know this, literally like, is this a good choice? And then I say it to people all the time. Like I have friends that are, that are, you know, like, are you making good choices today? Literally like I'll shoot them a text, good choices with a question mark. And I, I laugh every time I do it. Cause it's just like, you just kind of, that just, it's life. If you make good choices, life is good, right? If you make bad choices, life is bad. And uh, it's so funny. And my, my real estate team all the time, right? You know, every decision you make, is this a good choice, you know? Uh, or the other one, the other counterpart to that is, uh, this is represent winning. You know, same same idea. You know, Ryan's, you know, we represent winning at all times. You know, every decision you make, if I'm going to have that extra cheeseburger, is that what a winner would do? If I'm going to have that 15th uh, vodka soda, you know, is that what a winner <laughs> would do? You know, you know, it's like, when you think about I don't know, that, man. De yeah. Depends what I've won. I mean, that, that Super Bowl, I might, I might could do a few cheeseburgers. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, at the time, it may sound like a good choice, and then you know, an hour or two later, you're like, oh man, that wasn't a good choice, you know. So, um, but it's funny. Uh, that that also goes back. Uh, I talk about it a lot. I did Weight Watchers years ago, and um, dude, what uh, happened? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, brutal. Yeah. Uh, get, well, he brutal. started. He threw me under the bus in the beginning. Yeah. I've, been wait, I've been waiting. It's, it's all fair. It's all fair. And then, that so, was good. Yeah. Yeah. It's all fair. And the uh, leader said, if you're going to choose to, uh, you know, have that cheesecake, make sure it's the best cheesecake you're ever going to have in your life, or it's you're wasting it, or it's not worth it. And I always thought that, that was, was kind point. of a neat concept. Yeah. Like when I sit down and it's like, you know, I'm going to eat this. I'm like, eh, it's just like a crappy, you know, Chips Ahoy cookie. Like they're not homemade, you know, cookies that grandma made. They're, you know. It's like, you know, if they're homemade just out of the oven, you know what, I'm going to have one because it's a really good one. But if it's like these crappy, just eating a cookie to eat a cookie type thing, you know, and I constantly, it's another thing that kind of just rings in my head when I'm making food decisions because if you've been overweight, um, you know, you kind of know that every day is a battle with food. Uh, every decision you make is, you know, am I going to eat the good thing or am I going to eat the bad thing? Am I going to drink the good thing? You know, am I going to drink my water today? You know, or am I going to go, you know, drink whatever, sweet tea, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a conscious decision you got to make. It's a lifestyle, right? That it's not a diet. It's never a diet. It's a lifestyle. If you look at it as a diet, it just you just crash and burn and you start over again. If you change the lifestyle, then it's a lifestyle change, and you wind up you know making those good choices every day and, and maintaining the weight and the fitness and all that level. And to me, that in my process of losing weight, I was three hundred and five pounds at one point. Um, it's uh, it's a whole mindset, and once you get off that mindset, you uh, you lose it. We're losing you. How do you keep that mindset? How do you keep that focus? Because I get, I've been fat, and then I get skinny, and then I get fat again, and then I get skinny again. Why does that happen, Mark? Well, I mean, on the surface, it's a lack of discipline. Well, yeah, yeah, that's really what goes but on. Pizza and, tastes good, <laughs> and and I think it's the lack of what I like to refer to as minimum accepted standards. So, and, and I've had this conversation with quite a few of my clients lately of what's, what's the bare minimum that you will accept for your life. And then you have to hold yourself accountable to it. So let's use weight, for example, it's one of the easiest things to comprehend, right? So Sam, let's say you want to, you know, you, you, you get to 200 pounds. You're like, I like being 200 pounds. I feel good. Like I, I don't feel skinny. I feel strong. I can do the things I want to do. I can move. Right. Mm -hmm. So that needs to become the minimum accepted standard. So anytime you go over 200, then you got to rein it back in. You step on that scale tomorrow and you're 202, that means strict diet, two a days, gallon of water, no alcohol, no cheeseburgers, no, you know, whatever it needs to yeah. be until yeah. you're back down there. No the problem is we don't set those standards for ourselves. And then you're 202 and then you're 205 and then you're 210 and then you're 215. And then you're like, oh shit, what happened? Mm. No. So I think by having those standards, across the board this goes for everything you know how many if, if you're married like how often do you go out on dates with your wife if you have kids what what's that time look like with your kids you know brian you ride your bike okay well how you know what's the minimum accepted standard for riding your bike every week yeah. it's, it's funny it's, you it's, say that dude like because uh -huh. when when i slimmed down the first time i i came from 40s into 30s for waist size and uh 
remember I got to 38 inch pants and I threw away all the rest of the pants. And then I went down 36s and 34s. But then when I gained weight, I ended up back in the 38 inch pants. So the next time it happened, I threw away the 38s. I only got the 36s left. I got down to the 34s and I ended up back in the 36s. Well, now I'm back in the 34s. I'm thinking I might just go in my closet and throw away every single 36 inch pair of pants I've got. <laughs> That's it. Well, it's definitely when 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 the pants I, start I getting tighter again, like you that. start to go, never "What the hell am I doing?" That. You know. But you you throw away like if my if my thirty fours were tight, I'd be like, "Oh, let me just get the old thirty sixes out and slip on comfortable into those." But <laughs> you, you make a good point. If if thirty fours are the minimum accepted standard, then they're not going to be thirty six inch pants in the closet, are they? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. So see, I, I think we just I think we just found a mind hack. That's I, it. I expect to see a post with those pants in the trash can later. <laughs> uh, Let them on fire. We'll see. We'll see. I'll go, I'll go find some. Uh, that, that would mean me actually having to do my laundry and fold it and put it all up. So we'll <laughs> no, actually, we got uh, the church group in town does this thing called Midnight Run, and everyone donates to clothes, and they all sort it out, and they go into Manhattan, and they give it out to all the homeless people all over, which are all over the place in Manhattan now. And um, it's kind of... It's a nice thing that they do, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm getting rid of my fat clothes because if I leave the fat clothes in there, it's you're tempted to go back into them. You know, like I said, those 34s are tight again. Yeah, we throw the 36s back on, you know, and then, you know, you can creep up like that. I'm up like 20 pounds. When I finished 75 hard, I was down to 222 was my high school weight, and I was down that, and I'm up about 20 pounds right now. It's pissing me off. I mean, I was, you know, coming out of two workouts a day and the water and, and strict. You know, when I got down to that weight and it was awesome and then you let off the gas and you, you know, you don't drink, you know, the full amount of water every day and, you know, you only down to one workout a day and, you know, you start backing off that, you know, lifestyle and it's creeps and it's, it's, it's bothering me now. It's, I got to get back on it. Summer's coming. <laughs> but, uh, I thought you was, uh, when did you last do it? Didn't you just go through it a little while back? Full 75 hard, uh, was about a year ago now. And, um, I went down to 222 was when I finished that. Actually, I think after my... Phase one, I think it was 75 hard phase one. I was 222. And then I've creeped back up. I did the, it's like a phase two 30 day, but it was, it's, it was out of the time frame. but I just wanted to give myself a 30 day hit again and drop 10 pounds in 30 days. You know, 75 hard is awesome when you, cause it, you know, it is, I think it's the strict program that really, you know, you got to hit your marks, you know, and it's like, I got to get that work oh, out. Yeah. I got to get my water in. And I think a lot of us in our crazy world need those task checkpoints, like our check. The app is the best. I mean, that, that for me, it was like, all right, look at that. Oh, shit, we got to do this, check. All right, go do this now, check. And it's kind of like you're winning by each check, you know, and as you get through the day. And if you could check off all your stuff before the day's over, it's like a win, you know, because that last workout at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning out hiking in the neighborhood because you were doing work and you're like, shit, I got to go work out. And then and you, got, you always can say that, you know, the uh, the family used to say, you're crazy, just go to bed. And, you know, then we'll know if you didn't do it. I was like, no, 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 that's what it's all about. <laughs> I'm not going to bed until I know I did it. You know, it's like. And you know, cheating. If you're cheating yourself, like who else are you cheating? You know. So it's. Uh, I said it all the time. I said, like, no, no, no. We're, I'm going out. It's one o'clock in the morning. We're gonna go hike for 45 minutes around the neighborhood. You know. It was actually a nice time. We put our podcast in, our music, or whatever. Just dead silence and listen to the voices in your head, which can be scary at sometimes. <laughs> but uh, that's actually some of the fun I liked about Seven Hard is that night workout outside, just you and nature, quiet thinking. You know, it was kind of like a meditation period. Yeah, I do my outside in the morning. I like to get it out of the way, get that outside one out of the way, plus get a little bit of fresh air. I, I was like doing that. my night before bed. That was my thing. Go out, get some fresh air, and then kind of wear myself out and go to sleep. And, um, you know, kind of wind down a day and get get with your thoughts, you know. I try. I tried to do two workouts outside if uh, the weather was, you know, reasonable. You know, do a bike ride and a hike or something like that, you know, whenever possible. But, yeah. You know, I, I think that, well, I know, you know, we, we as humans, we thrive with structure. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Jocko says discipline equals freedom, right? And, you know, to take a play out of Mike Claudio's book, you know, he has what he calls a championship day. And he's got this big list of, you know, it's a mix of personal, business, mm -hmm. professional, um, you know, uh, physical stuff, whatever. So he's got this whole list of this is what a championship day looks like. Mm. And like much like 75 hard, it's a very, I don't want to say it's rigid, but I mean, it's got parameters on it. You know, his championship day does involve working out and drinking a gallon of water, you know? Yeah. So 
he he structures his life around what that looks like and just like the rest of us if he does that more often than not then he's going to win at whatever he's trying to do and and so you know we that's why 75 hard works so well for all of us like there's no one that it doesn't work for if they're if they're doing yeah. it the right way if they're operating with intention and integrity within that program it works like a charm every time because mm-hmm. you you're eliminating a shit ton of bad habits you're instituting a whole bunch of good habits yeah. and you're doing it every single day and lo and behold yeah. Before, <laughs> you yeah. see success like wow. 30, 34 pounds in 75 days it was like it was i mean and and how much mental baggage you lose in the process too it's you know everyone thinks it's a diet and that's not the purpose of it you know the purpose of it is get your head on straight and and fight your uh your bitch voice as they say right winning the, winning yeah. the, the war with yourself right we're all, we're own worst enemies going out and just about everything we do so but um and that's really kind of my, well, you and 75 Hard all roll together is We Ride at Dawn. That's kind of where that came from. I got into Apex and started hanging out around you and everybody getting up at, you know, crack of dawn and going and doing their workouts. And honestly, I don't love the gym. Actually, I like I like going to your gym, honestly. Going to a regular gym and, and picking things up and putting them down and standing, you know. I, to me, it's so boring. I could leave. Like, I want to stick pens in my eyes, you know. So at least your gym, you got us running around the parking lot and doing all that stuff. And I actually <laughs> like that workout because it's... It's honestly that yours going to your gym was the first time I was ever exposed to that, um, you know, that type of okay. uh, CrossFit. Yeah, I was, I've, you know, local gyms around here. CrossFit's not really, I mean, it's becoming a thing here. Um, but for us, it was all these Gold's gyms, you know, lift things up, put them down, you know, and you know, there's all these muscle guys walking around, posing in the mirror, and you're like, this is like, no, I don't want to be here, you know. <laughs> so we would uh, do that kind of stuff at the boxing gym. Like we would do a lot of that stuff that Mark does at the boxing gym, except we'd hit more stuff than Mark hits. Yeah, I, right. I like that. It's, it's you know every time is like, different, and you know you're inside. Just you're moving outside, to station you know, to station yeah. to station. Yeah, we run around the building a lot too. Yeah, you know, now it's a big thing here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. Burpees, burpees, and, then, and jump rope. Yeah, but it, um, it keeps it stimulating. It's different. You know, it's hard. It's like this is fun in a way. You know, as much as you, this sucks, but then it's different. And we get to try this now. We get to go push those carts through the parking lot and <laughs> all those cool different things you do. You know, um, I, but, I actually got pretty good at jump rope. Jump rope, yeah, fun. we used to jump yeah. rope back in the day when I wrestled, but I wasn't any good at now. No, three hundred sixty-five days of jump rope may be the next challenge. With it's Miranda. good for your cardio. It's good. There's a girl in Apex doing yeah. a bunch of jumping rope, yeah. isn't there? Right. Oh no, um, Michaela. Michaela's doing it. Michaela's doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there you go. Yes, yeah, so I think she's done three hundred sixty-five days, and I think she started again now. Another three hundred sixty-five days, I believe. My three hundred sixty-five day crew. But, That's a lot of jumping rope. It's a lot of bike riding too. 342 days of 10 miles plus a day and um yeah it's a lot of riding but um but again i wanted to put myself in a routine of something i liked and i was riding my bike a lot at 75 hard and i said you know what you know it started as a thing and then a couple of friends got involved and you know i was like hey we're gonna go ride tomorrow you know i was like hell yeah man we ride at dawn you know and it was uh <laughs> that was and, that. and it started you know and then i said we got the message involved and uh mike claudio actually started going live <laughs> <laughs> and uh he inspired my live and uh he actually stopped going live and i have from 242 days i think today is of messages and and that's been fun because um like i said you don't realize who's listening like you know a lot of times you that's you, the truth you know yeah. you're looking at it and you, you know there's only three people showing up on the screen and uh a week or two later someone will t- you know message me or i'll see him out in person and they'll talk to me about that message and they're like oh you know the other day we talk about that it's just what i needed to hear i was in the middle of something and, you know, it just hit me right. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even see you look at it, you know. But they went back and looked at the replay or whatever. And, you know, just keep going. That's why I tell everyone, you know, just keep going. You know, my, my real estate team on social media, they're like, oh, I put these posts up and two people like. I was like, well, first of all, find more inspiring posts, but just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep giving, <laughs> you know. Because, um, like I said, it's consistency, right? You know, if I, don't, if I don't put a message up early in the morning, people... Hey, you're right. Everything good, you know, because everyone's mm-hmm. used to seeing them, which is it's kind of fun. Like, all right, people are really looking for this, you know. I've been going a little bit later now, as uh, the, you know, dark out and freezing out here, and I when I was doing it out in the darkness, it's like no one can see me. I'm like, all right, so we'll push the message to the end of the ride, and we'll go a little bit later, and uh, we'll get to see the sunrise a little bit and get some some daylight in the process. But um, it's uh, it's definitely been fun, and it's expired inspired by you. So just so you know that you're you're part of the reason behind this. Making good choices every morning when I ride at dawn. Thanks to Mark. <laughs> I love it. So, I love it. So what's coming up next week? Oh, wait. 
What, what's today? Monday. What's coming up later this week? Sorry, my bad. <laughs> yeah, time flies when you have fun. In fact, what's coming up on Thursday yeah. of this week? Let's well, let's change gears and talk about Goon Squad and Apex Live, dude. Yeah. Tell us so, about it. I'll, I'll I'll give you guys a little little insight on the background. So we got the Goon Squad. That's the six of us, right? Mm-hmm. And we were gonna we were gonna host an event last year, last fall. And there were there were far too many things going on. You know, there was an Apex Live coming up. We had Apex Evolution. There was a Cabo trip. Like it was just there was all this stuff mm. crammed. And we said, you know what? Like this isn't smart. We're just not going to do it. And we go have lunch with Stuman, and he goes, Well, why don't we just make it an Apex event and you guys run it? But, well, all right, let's do that. Sense, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah. And you know, here's what he told us. He said, Look. He said, you know, when I was coming up, I didn't have a stage like, no, you know, I wasn't getting invited to speak like nobody wanted me. Nobody wanted Sean. Nobody wanted Andy, you know, the the crew that he runs with. He's like, so we built a stage and here it is. And he goes, you know, I built this for you, not us specifically, but he's like, I built this for you guys. And he's just waiting for people to step up and be a leader. Like there's no you know, there's no application for this. There's no process that like, if you do this, this, and this, and this, and then you get to come on stage. Like that's not how that shit works. So, you know, he's literally just waiting for people to step up and assume a leadership role and go serve the community. And then you get that opportunity to do that. And, but here's the other thing he said, he goes, but it's on you guys to make sure you're bringing up the next crew of people as well. Hmm. So, this thing can go on forever, yeah. Infinite, technically yeah. speaking, you know, and again, back to what's the power of the network. Can we do it all by ourselves? Well, sure. We can do things by ourselves, but there's so much more power in collectively doing something. So, you know, I'm excited to share the stage with guys that have made a tremendous difference in my life. You know, we have an ongoing Facebook chat. We hold each other accountable. We call each other on our bullshit. You know, we make sure that, where like no one wants to be the weakest link in the group right yeah. Yeah. and and i don't think any of us would pinpoint anybody as being a weak link like we all have a certain skill set we're all in different industries but at the end of the day like we're all here to serve people and we want nothing more than to see everyone have the success that we're having because we know that leads to more success for us as well so, you know, I, I'm, I'm really excited that this has panned out the way that it has, that the six of us are the speakers. You know, Stuman's going to close the day out, which will be phenomenal as always because that dude's just kind of a natural on stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but to be able to share this with guys that I've bonded with over the last couple of years that I attribute a lot of my personal growth to is it's very humbling. It's very fulfilling, and I'm, I'm just excited. And, you know, we got a good – I know we got a good crowd of people. We've sold a ton of tickets. You know, hopefully everybody can get there. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed on that, yeah. Oh, my God. But it, it's going to be awesome. And, and again, I think what's, what's really funny, Mike said something to me the other day. He goes, you know, it's interesting that we're all actually willing to get on stage. And I never thought about it. But think about it. the number one fear is public speaking. Mm-hmm. People fear that over death. Wow. And so the fact that we have this collective group of, of, of guys that were like, oh, I get to be on stage. Awesome. How, how much time yeah. do I have? Like, yeah. that was one of the, like, how much time do I got? Yeah. You know, what can I talk about? Can I have music? Can I have slides? Like, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're like ready to jump at it. Yeah. And uh, I think it's really unique. And so just being able to share a perspective, again, that I think a lot of people don't have. And, and knowing that we've spent so much time together, there's going to be a cohesiveness with the messaging that I think a lot of times you're just not going to get at certain events because you have a bunch of individual speakers that don't do business with each other and don't do life with each other. So you're going to see some overriding concepts and principles throughout the day. You're probably going to hear some jokes about Chris's droopy balls and uh, (laughs) Thomas's big head. You know, uh, know, we'll all throw it. We'll throw some jabs in there because that's what we do. You know, that's that's part of us. And so I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm super excited. It's going to be awesome. Maybe we'll get to hear the origin of the ball story one of these days. <laughs> well, he's the old guy, so they, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's the old guy in the group. So I was, I was laughing at that. So uh, mean. He's such a nice guy. Y'all are just so mean to him. Big Daddy with Adam Sandler when uh, his girlfriend goes with the old guy. 
I love that clip. That's so funny. <laughs> I sent that to Chris not too long ago. I'm like, is this where this came from? <laughs> that loose skin and old balls. <laughs> oh, so great. So great. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this went south fast. We ended up talking about balls. Ah, I, I see what you did there. Went south, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going south. We're going south Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah, so what else? So. What else we got, Brian? So, what else is on the horizon for you, Mark? Um, any new books in play? Any uh, new ventures? Any anything that's uh, out of the norm that uh, you're working on? Actually, I am going to be releasing a program called the Joy Code later this year, and my my goal is to teach people to live with the type of joy that I live with every day. Mm, I like it. I think there's well, number one, there's a lot of miserable people out there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that have happiness, but not joy. And I, I see those as two different things. I used to just think it was me I'm like, Oh, it's just how I am. And how I no, there's a, there's a reason that I am the way that I am. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized the systems that I implement, the things that I do, the, the, the mental things that I tell myself every day, and why I'm so happy, why I always have a smile on my face. And when we translate it to the business world, you know, what's going to happen is I'm going to go into companies and teach their employees how to be happy. And guess what happens when you have happy employees? Productivity goes They up. produce more. And when mm -hmm. they produce more, they make more money. The owner makes more money. Your employee retention is better. Your culture is better. Like everything across the board is yeah. improved when you have happy 100%. people around. So that, that that's that's the big thing that I'm working on this year. I'm working with Mike Claudio. He's helping me kind of craft it and, and figure out the best way to bring it to the marketplace. But that within probably the next two to three months, you're going to see that go live. And uh, I'm I'm really excited about it. And and that's that's always the kicker for me. Like when I'm really excited about something, I know I'm on the right path. Yeah. I was yeah. really excited to write the book. I'm excited really hearing you talk excited. about it. I think that's just like so many people need that. I mean, it's just everybody i call it all the time don't let anyone steal your joy whatever joy you have keep it and don't let it protect it and don't let anyone steal it you know if someone cuts you off in traffic don't lose your shit and be pissed off all day whatever you know they need to get there before me you know like and that concept that's actually i listen to joel osteen a lot and he talks about that a lot and don't let anyone steal your joy like just wake up in the morning happy and keep it protect it you know don't don't let stuff take you sideways don't you know and uh, obviously I, one of the guys that was always talking about how they've never seen you not smiling uh, uh, it was Mike or one of the guys. I'm like, yeah, Mark. He doesn't, he doesn't smile. Never comes off his face. He's always happy. And <laughs> hey, so I, real quick, I have a hack for people when they cut you off in traffic because that's like one of the biggest things that everybody is pissed off of, right? Yeah. So I just tell myself, I bet they got diarrhea, <laughs> and they need to get to a bath. They need to get to a bathroom quickly. So. Yes. Here you go. There you go. You need to get there. Go get it. You know. And it makes me like feel that. better. Yeah, <laughs> but it's true. And then the other, the other thing, I... you know, you can, you can actually manifest things into existence. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Payback's a bitch, huh? Yeah. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. But uh, I think a lot of it's just being conscious in the moment, right? Not reacting and thinking, right? So, you know, someone cuts you off, and the first thing you do is you flip them the bird. You don't even think about it. It's just reactionary. You know, and, uh, you know, if you take a minute and go take it, take that breath before you react, we talk about, right. And go, is this worth getting excited over? You know, doesn't matter. No, like I'm not losing my joy over this, you know, Never but, does. If, but a lot of times I think we're just going through the motions and we're not present. You know, we're not, we're literally just on cruise control and we're just reacting to things as, you know, as you know, stuff swings at your head, you're ducking this way and you're ducking that way. And right. But you're not really thinking why you're ducking. You just, you know, as told people, every time I walk into a basement, I duck, <laughs> I might have enough room, but I automatically duck, you know, cause it's just reactionary, you know? And, um, I think it's almost like trying to slow it down and really just pay attention to what's going on and make a choice rather than a reaction. Um, I think it's, crucial and it, it's it's a hard concept because again we're, we're so quick to just fire without yeah. thinking and it, it comes back to relationships with the wife or whatever you may be in a fight and you say something a bomb that you know you drop a bomb that uh you know maybe you shouldn't have said and just because you're in the moment you're not thinking about you know once you say it you can't take it back you know type thing and uh, i know we've all been there and with relationships or whatever it is in your life you know a quick decision you now made. we we yeah. learn to keep our mouth shut mate yeah well that's yeah, yeah that's uh that's key 
Yeah, but um, but you know, like I said, a lot of times just taking that reaction out and putting a thought in it, and uh, mm -hmm. and figuring out how to do that. You know, just slowing it down just enough to take that deep breath and go, okay, don't get crazy. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's reacting versus responding. Yeah. I think it's yeah. what you were looking for. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. No, that's that's, a, that's right. crucial because I think once you start mastering, that's something that Apex has actually showed me a lot of. You know, just yeah, I think we're sum of all our parts, right? So everyone, every every podcast we listen to, every conversation we have with with next level people that are on this thing, I used to react a lot. I used to be very reactionary, and I've gotten to the point now where it's just like, all right, good. You know, you go fight your battle. I'm, I'll be over here waiting for you to get back. You know, um, where it used to be like you immediately got charged up and got excited and turned red and you know wanted to you know fight whoever came in front of you. Now it's like, listen, you want to fight whatever, go fight yourself. You know, like you know, it's like there's a whole different mindset that uh, really I think uh, it comes with being conscious and slowing down a little bit. You know, and, and, and thinking and being aware and you know processing everything. Um, I said I don't even know how to train that. It's probably part of what you're getting at with your but your program of being joyful is, is to keep your joy. Like, you know, be happy, but keep your happiness. Don't, don't let things trigger you, you know, and don't be reactionary. Um, yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. You should call it like joy division. That's what your name should be. Joy division. Yeah. You want to do that? <laughs> Can somebody take that already? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I like it. I like it. Good stuff. All right. So we're, uh, yeah. we're all going to jump on a plane or someone's going to jump in the car and we're hopefully not going to get iced out. And, yeah, I think uh, it's about time to wrap it up, isn't it? Yeah, we're All gonna right. go uh, reunited. I'll start singing that song with the soundtrack. Reunited. <laughs> it feels so good. No, no I'm gonna shut this. I'm gonna shut, shut this it down now. We'll we'll be down there for Wednesday afternoon. We'll be getting together and uh, Thursday for the uh, festivities. And um, it's a great, another great episode. Um, we've had all of the Goon Squad except for Drewby on. So Drewby owes us a date. And uh, we were hoping to get you guys on next Monday. Uh, I guess see what goes on with weather and all that stuff. I'd like to get all you guys on. Uh, we would like to get you all on and oh do Lord. a and do a recap. I think it'll be a shit show. But yeah, think, that sounds like yeah, a shit show. Yeah, I think it'll be a, a good time. So we can talk about all the craziness that went on. And so if you guys are all available or as much as you as we can get, I'd like to get you back on for next Monday and uh, and do a recap and talk about all the fun stuff that went on and and where where we're going from there. I think it'll be it'll be a fun episode. I'm sure there'll be a well, lot of ball talk in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate you guys having me on. You know, I I take any any and every opportunity I can to run my mouth wherever somebody will actually listen to me. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I appreciate well, it, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Thursday. Yes, yes. And thank fun. you. And for those that don't know and don't follow you, super quick, where can they catch you online? Mark Zamanoff on Facebook. That's I'm I'm always on Facebook. You can find my book, Make Good Choices, on Amazon. But I'm on like. Facebook's like my second resident, so. That's it. And then, uh, the, the Fitness Ninja on Instagram, right? The? Yes, sir. The Fitness Ninja, yeah. The Fitness all Ninja right. on Instagram. Follow, like, share, all that good stuff. All right, everyone. That's it. We appreciate you all for tuning in. Mark, we appreciate you being on here. We have much Mark, respect thanks, for you sir. and the Groom Squad. Yes. Uh, we're looking forward to this event. It's going to be a good time. And uh, we'll just keep uh, putting a head on a pillow every night knowing we're making the world a better place. Fire starts fire. All right, everyone. All right. Have a great Make night. Make good choices, kids. Night. Ha, ha, ha.